Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a tool tip. <laughs> I, I literally, so one of the things one has to do as a maker uh, frequently is separate things that don't want to be separated. Yeah, you often have to persuade things that have spent many years together, like a like a, a steel rod in a pipe receiver, for instance. Uh, maybe some rust or dirt has gotten in there, and you might need to pry that out. Prying and levering turns out to be a really important occupation uh, within the making of things. And there are lots of different methods for prying, and I'm going to show you some, and I'm going to, actually, I forgot just one, hold on. No, 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 oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite prying instruments. I don't mean to pry. This is um, kind of a crowbar. Um, and it's a small crowbar, but everyone, I think everyone knows what a crowbar looks like. Um, and a crowbar is usually everyone's first experience with pry bars. Um, pry bars are using one of the six simple machines, a lever, uh, also a wedge, but specifically the lever, to apply force onto a small area. So every pry bar has... Uh, roughly similar features, which is there's the business end, which is usually a piece of durable metal, uh, but, you know, spudgers for the iFixit kits can be chrome steel or flat metal or even, yeah, all sorts of different materials. But in the prying of things, there's usually a business end that is flatter, and then there is an arm for which you can grab uh, and get some uh, uh, persuasion in the matter. And this is like, I collected this years ago because it's kind of a perfect size for a small shop. I don't need a crowbar per se as much as I need something like this. And so weirdly, I don't have a crowbar in my collection. But this little pry bar is lovely. Uh, I have even smaller pry bars. And this was sent to me by a fan. Is this a farrier tool? I'm not sure. A fan made this, they forged this, they are a blacksmith. Um, Sadly, the piece of paper that had their name on it has moved on. So if it was you, go ahead and tell us in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, this is a great little piece. Uh, and again, just for getting in somewhere or giving something a little bit of leverage, you often don't need much when you are utilizing uh, leverage to move things. And sensitivity is really paramount. So I like having lots of different options uh, up to and including this little beauty. Uh, and this having both a flat, right? You see how this goes this way and this goes this way. I've used this more than most others. This is terrific for separating uh, uh, Morris tapers that got too tight or things like that. This is a fabulous tool. Okay, moving on up. This is also a lot of people's first crowbar. These are available in absolutely every hardware store, I think, in the world. And again, they give you this and they give you this. And this is, I think this is, no, spring steel ripping bar is what this is called. It's got a thing up here for nails and a thing over here also for pulling stuff out. Very, very useful. Just a few bucks. Absolutely, you should get one of these. Um, I came across this recently and I really dig this thing. So this has a telescoping handle. I'm gonna try and find this. I think we'll include a link. It's a gear wrench, the gear wrench 82220, 82220, 8 gear wrench. Um, this is fabulous. I especially love the ability to change the length of it, but here's even the better part is uh, by pushing this button here, you can change the angle of attack on this front pry bar. And that makes this, like I need this once every 18 months, but each time I do, oh, I'm like, Mwah, thank you so much for existing. We still haven't gotten to my favorite yet. And this one isn't even there, but this one's spectacular. I live next door to a uh, master carpenter uh, named Bobby. And Bobby, for my birthday, 
you know, we just explained, ex we exchange pleasantries in the hallway and we work next door to each other. So, you know, we've known each other quite well over the last 10 years. And apparently he knows me well enough to know what every little boy wants for their birthday. And that is a gigantic freaking screwdriver. Dude, this thing, Valley Tools makes this. Sorry, I was just noting that I don't think that the uh, logo here is actually parallel to the tool, which speaks like someone was sleeping at the factory, but I don't care. Look at this thing. This is 36 inches long if it's an inch, and I haven't used it yet, but Bobby, thank you. This is a great, great birthday gift, and we still haven't gotten to my favorite. No, 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 no. So one of my favorite parts of working on Mythbusters was the equipment acquisition. And by that I mean I was frequently working I was frequently working with experts who would bring tools to utilize and then I'd get to see what the expert wants to use. So when Dave Lewinog came and was our sniper for the uh, dodging a sniper's bullet episode, that guy unbelievable shot, clustering rounds in about an 8-inch circle from a kilometer away. And I was like, tell me what hearing protection you use. And these. Yeah, and so I've been using this hearing protection the whole time. Who is this? This is, um, hang on just a sec. I should, so I had to cover over all the logos because it was Mythbusters, but I want to tell you who makes this because these are really good uh, hearing protection. Hold on. Oh, I'm sure all you shooters out there knew exactly what this was. These are the Supreme Supreme Pro X MSA uh, hearing protection. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is the under helmet version. Um, this is the over the head version. And I've got both over the years. Super, super useful. Use them all the time. So I love finding out from the experts their favorite piece of equipment. Now, as you can imagine on Mythbusters, we worked with a lot of different fire departments over the years. And I love fire departments. I really do. Uh, and firemen have, well, at least the firemen we were working with at Alameda County have a favorite pry bar. And it's actually called the Pro Bar. <laughs> and this is it. Um, it is made of some kind of steel. I'm gonna shoot, this is really cool. Ooh, wait. K-Tool and Co. makes this Pro Bar. This is the small one. This is the small one. It weighs a ton. It is heavy in my hand. It is made of some kind of special steel. I probably could find it out if I looked it up in the catalog. But it, in addition to this big flat like uh, uh, here and this big fork here and its weight and it's even got welded in shackles for slinging it over your shoulder, it also has this zombie killing attachment, this giant spike, which, dude, I have abused the crap out of this thing and it's got just like a, it's barely shown. This is... This is at least 12 years old, and I have used this on dozens of episodes of Mythbusters to smash things and plow into them and pry them up. And it really does not show its age or its use. Uh, this is, without a doubt, my favorite pry bar in this building. And it's really specifically because of this horrifying spike that it has on it. Dude, yeah. Firemen, there's no time to like dally, right? They just need one tool that'll get them into that car, into that building, into through that door. Uh, and the pro bar here looks like it to me. Um, yeah. If I have, ooh, if I have missed anything in my uh, in my analysis of prying equipment, uh, let me know in the comments because I'm always I'm all ears. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, 
but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.